All right, so now we're going to look at um, angle measures and angle bisectors. So first, we're going to learn how to construct a copy of an angle. So first thing you're going to do, similar to what we did with line segments, is you're going to uh, use your straight edge to draw a ray with an endpoint X. So make that a ray. Use your straight edge. So this ray that we just drew is going to be kind of like the bottom of the angle that we're copying it to. Now you need your compass. You're going to place the point of the compass on the vertex of the angle, the point of the angle. You're going to stretch out your compass just a little ways. And we're going to make an arc that touches both sides of the angle. So just like that. Now without messing up your compass, without adjusting it, bring it over to the end point where we're copying the angle to. And we're going to make a very similar arc. So now you're going to take your compass back to the original angle. And you're going to measure the opening of that arc. So you measure from where the arc touches the angle in both places. That's how wide you stretch your compass. And then take your compass to where you're copying it. And make a little arc so that you have the X formed by the two arcs. Now that little X that we just formed, we just have to go through that point. So from our vertex here, use your straight edge to go through that point. And we copied the angle. So there's actually a bunch of different ways to name an angle. Um, here's the actual formal definition of an angle. Formed by two rays with the same endpoint, the common endpoint is called the vertex. I used that terminology on the other uh, when we were copying it. And then those two rays are called the sides. So when you're drawing and naming an angle, so if we're drawing an angle PQR, we need to have two rays with a common endpoint. Two rays, common endpoint. That common de common endpoint is the vertex, and when you're naming the points for the angle, the only thing that really matters when you're naming it is that the letter in the middle is the vertex. So Q, which is in the middle, needs to be the vertex. The other two letters don't matter which ray they belong to. I'll put P there and I'll put R there. So there's angle PQR. So 
So this angle over here is already drawn out for us. So let's just name it. The only thing that matters is that K goes in the middle. So you can name it angle L, K, J. Or you could switch those letters around and start with J first, as long as K goes in the middle. Also, since they have the little number in there, that's another kind of shortcut way of naming angles. If you put a number, you can just name it with that number. So that's also just angle one. Sometimes, I don't particularly like this way, but sometimes um, they'll just use the vertex letter, so K. But it's kind of just being lazy and not wanting to use the other two letters. I don't like it. I prefer, if you're going to use letters, name it with all three letters, keeping the vertex in the middle. But in case you ever see just angle K written down, that's what it means. They'll just name the vertex. So, um, there's different types of angles. There's acute angles, um, if they're less than 90 degrees, so they're small, small angles, acute angles. There are right angles, which are 90 degrees. And there's obtuse angles, which are more than 90, but less than 180. And there's also a straight angle, because it makes a straight line, uh, which is 180 degrees. So you can also use, you can use a protractor to measure these. So when you're using a protractor, every protractor either has like a little hole or at least a little crosshairs like this one does, um, where you can see the crosshairs form uh, where you're going to place the vertex of that angle. So if we wanted to talk about this angle here, Place the crosshairs on the vertex, and you see that it's pointing over here. It looks like it's pointing out to about 135 degrees. Now, one area where students sometimes get confused is they don't know whether to call this 135 degrees by using the inside numbers or 45 degrees using the outside numbers. The best advice I can give is just use common sense. That's a large angle. So it's got to be more than 90. So it's not the 45, it's got to be the inside numbers. It's easiest when you just think about it rather than just mindlessly writing down whatever number you see. Um, you can also just look at where the ray is pointing. It has to be pointing to zero. Since it's pointing to zero on the inside numbers, you would use the inside numbers for your angle. So if we're going to use a protractor to draw an angle with 53 degree measure, start with your ray. And you're going to use your compass. You're going to line it up, crosshairs on the vertex. And we want 53 degrees. So here's 50. 53. Right about there. So just use your pencil to mark off where the 53 degrees is. Since there's an inside cutout on your protractor, you could use that inside cutout with your pencil. And you just draw the other side. That is 53 degrees. So for 138 degrees, you're going to do the same thing. Put the vertex in your crosshairs. 
of your protractor. 138 degrees, so that's the outside numbers. No, sorry, inside numbers the way I have it drawn. 138 degrees would be right there. Make a little mark with your pencil. And then draw the other side of the angle. They are rays, so they should have arrows on them. And that's 138 degrees. So you can use your protractor to find the measure of the angle. You just line up your protractor with the crosshairs. Crosshairs on the vertex. And then you see that that other ray is pointing to 40 or 140. Since you can see it's an acute angle by looking at it, that will be 40 degrees. Clearly not 140 degrees, you can tell by looking. Same thing with this other angle, but this time we need to rotate our protractor around a little bit so that we line it up with one of the sides. And you can see That's pointing I'm a little bit off. So it looks like it's pointing right here to either 105 or 75. Looking at that, that is more than 90 degree angle. You can also see that the First side is pointing to zero on the inside, so we're using the inside numbers. So that's at 105 degrees. 